in general, Active Directory is a multi-master system. What we mean by that is you can do things on any Active Directory domain controller, and they will be replicated to other domain controllers. So I can go to any uh, DC, and I can create users, I can create groups, I can modify things, and it'll be replicated everywhere. I don't have a single master that I have to do everything on, and then it gets pushed out to all of my other DCs. In general, that's the case. Now, there are actually five things that are not. They're called FSMO or FISMO roles. It stands for Flexible Single Master Operations. So the single master means I can only have one domain controller that does this task. It's flexible because I can actually move that from one domain controller to the other. Now, let me show you what those FISMO uh, roles are and where you can see how they're assigned. I only have one domain controller here, so they're all going to be assigned to the same thing. But if I had more than one domain controller, I could move those around as needed. So I'm going to start by going to, and we'll look at these both in the GUI and then in uh, PowerShell as well. So I'm going to go to my Active Directory Domains and Trusts, and then I'm going to right-click, not on my domain, but up here where it says Active Directory Domains and Trusts, I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to look at Operations Master. And this identifies the first one, the Domain Naming Master. So two of these exist in the forest level. Three of them exist at the domain level. This is one that exists at the domain level. So it has to do with naming domains. And the idea here is we can't have two domain naming masters because theoretically then we could end up with two domains being created on different DCs that had the exact same name. And that would be a problem. So we have one of them that controls domain names. And you can see right here, that's my server. So here's the first one, the domain naming master. And that's a forest level uh, FISMO role. Now let's go to tools, active directory users and computers. And then now we're going to right click on Dalton.local. And we're going to look at operations masters. And here we're going to see three more, the RID, the PDC, and the infrastructure master. So the RID... Uh, it has is the relative identifier. It hands out, so all accounts are tracked using an SID or security identifier. So the RID will put groups of these together and hand them out to the different domain controllers to assign to uh, different accounts that are created on that domain controller. And the idea here is if this one parcels out blocks of them to different domain controllers, then we can guarantee that no two domain controllers create an account with the same SID. So this is per domain. It happens at the domain level. The PDC is the PDC emulator. Emulates the functions of a primary domain controller for pre-Windows 2000 clients. Obviously, this is something that is for backwards compatibility. The infrastructure master ensures consistency of objects for interdomain operations. And again, this exists at the domain. So these three are in the domain. And notice here, I can actually change any one of these three. So these three are my domain FISMO roles. And then I have that one that we've seen in the forest. Now, the other way we can look at them is going to be in PowerShell. Notice, by the way, I've only showed you four of them so far. So let's start with this. Let's do get AD. And actually, that's going to be really hard to see. Let me see if I can go to my properties here and bump up my font and make this a little easier, hopefully, for you guys to be able to see on your screen. I'm going to bump that up a little bit more because I want to make sure that you can see this. So take my font. I'm going to go up to 24. Okay. So I'm going to get do the command get ad. So let's do get ad domain first. And this is going to show me a bunch of information about my domain, including right here. Here's my infrastructure master role, and that's my server. I have my PDC emulator role right here. And again, I only have one server, so it's all going to be the same thing. And then the RID master. So here's where I can find my domain level FISMO roles in get AD domain. For the forest, I have two of them. I've only shown you one so far, but I can do this doing the get ad forest. And here's my domain naming master, and we've already seen that one. And this is going to be one per forest, and typically in the forest root domain. And then the other one is going to be the schema master. 
So the schema master is the one that controls the Active Directory database schema or the structure of that Active Directory database. So I can see these both in PowerShell and in the GUI client. So most of the time we don't worry too much about managing FSMO roles. Couple of things that we need to be aware of. So hypothetically, and I haven't seen this happen personally, but theoretically you could end up in a situation where one server is taking on a whole bunch of workload and like this is running multiple FSMO roles. Maybe you can move a couple of those off and that might release some of the workload. I haven't seen that get to the level where it's actually going to be an issue. But theoretically, it could happen. But the other place you're going to see this is when you start taking down domain controllers, either taking it down cleanly or you have one of them fail. So if you have something fail that has one of those FSMO roles, now you have a problem because that role cannot be fulfilled within your network. And so what you end up doing, if that server goes down hard, the assumption is that it will come back up so the, dom the network doesn't say, hey, let's elect a new one. They wait for that one to come back online. If it's not coming back online, then what you do is you need to change that uh, whichever server has that role. So if it went to a server that went down, then you need to say, okay, you other server over here, you take on that role. And that's where that change function comes in that we saw inside the GUI. Um, typically, if you're taking a domain controller down, you don't want it to, don't just turn the thing off. You need to demote it. And when you demote it, it will look to see if it has any FSMO roles. And if it does, then it will move those off to other servers. And that keeps that problem from happening. And that's the way you should do it. The way you demote that, by the way, is you'll go to Manage, Remove Roles and Features. And I'm not going to go through this whole process, but I do want to show it to you real quick. You're going to go to Active Directory Domain Services, uncheck that, say Remove Features, and then it's going to look and say, hey, I can't do that because I'm currently functioning as a domain controller. The Active Directory domain controller needs to be demoted before a the ADDS role can be removed. Here's your link to demote your domain controller. And that will move off any of those FSMO roles to other servers and make this process a lot cleaner. And then if you're doing the very last one, go ahead and go one step farther. You can say, hey, force removal of this domain controllers. That's normally not a good scenario. Or you can say, hey, this is the last domain controller in the domain. If it actually is the last one, then it won't try to move anything off. It will just shut down the domain uh, entirely. All right, cancel that because I want to keep this. All right, so there you go. A quick introduction to viewing and maybe a little bit of managing Active Directory FSMO roles.